Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Um, this is going to be my second video in the um, the Rail Get Your CDL program. Last week, I uh, did a video about pre orientation, the recruitment process, applying, and <clears throat> how that process goes uh, before you get here. Uh, today, I'm just going to talk over the first week of the program, like how your first week goes. Try to break it down. I, I guess I should have planned better. I guess I should have wrote down stuff, but I'm just going off the top of my head and trying to remember the best I can. Um, if I really forget anything big, um, try to put it down in the comments or, or something. So on day one, uh, you have to be downstairs and they have a, a shuttle that will bus you to the uh, terminal you're about your hotel is about 20 minutes away from the terminal so you need to be downstairs and ready by 6 30. he got there a couple minutes after 6 30 but uh, i drove so i just followed him he just he just told me to, to follow him to the terminal um he'll tell you what to do because you have to veer off one way when he goes one way when you get there <clears throat> but um so i drove but yeah so you wake up you can have breakfast with the hotel it's just standard um, hotel breakfast, nothing special. <clears throat> you can take the shuttle or you can follow the shuttle to the terminal. Like I said, it's about 20 minutes away. So you get there, um, roughly the first day you get there, around 7 o'clock. Um, you're going to follow everybody in the building. Now, if you're if you're doing the uh, Get Your CDL program, you're going to be in one building. And if you already have a CDL or you're already experienced, they'll have you, um, you know, go to another building you'll be doing something else with a different trainer uh, so you go in the building and they'll have a desk lined up you know just like any class and everything with your name so you, you already know where your seat's at and everything um, and then shortly after you sit down and after a little little bit your uh, your instructor will come in introduce themselves all that you know just normal starting class type stuff the first two days Monday and Tuesday were kind of boring. Um, just, sorry, my phone's sorry. Phone was going, uh, starting to go off. Um, first two days, um, Monday and Tuesday are kind of kind of boring. It's just like PowerPoint. Um, you ever been in the military? Death by PowerPoint. It's kind of what it's like. Just going over, showing you different videos of, um, like the destructive force of a. The vehicle you'll be driving so you know they're, they're very um they seem to be very big on safety very big on safety you'll go over a video telling you about the railway and how rail wants you to drive and um very big on safety that's a huge priority they they point out to you those first two days i mean we're really every day but those classes pretty much the the main topic is, is safety, about, about safety, just because of the, the destructive force of that vehicle can have while you're driving it. it you know, it, it can be bad if, you, if you're fucking off and being stupid behind the wheel, texting, you know, not paying attention to the shit. You know, you can kill people. So, you know, they go over, they're, they're, they hammer safety into you a lot. Um, they'll tell you about the railway, just you know how they will like you to drive and their safety stuff um they just um just it's just classes the first two day really uh the second day tuesday after lunch because so at 12 o'clock each day you will get a 30 minute lunch they bring the lunch to you the, um they'll give you a piece of paper on one day and you pretty much write they have a list of food options available throughout the week and you just write what you want so every uh, day at noon a uh, guy will deliver the food go up eat you know um, it's 30 minutes so um, the second day Tuesday after lunch we got to actually drive the the, the bobtails which just the truck by themselves no trailer attached to it um, or just a, in a little circle around the terminal you don't like take it anywhere they just do a little circle in the terminal just to try to get you you used to the truck you know like what the inside looks like um, how the pedals work like just show you how that the truck drives 
Um, so Monday and Tuesday, classes, uh, boring stuff. Uh, you'll get in the truck one time and just do a little circle. Wednesday, that's where the fun started. Wednesday, um, the first thing we did before lunch was we actually he actually took us out in the city. Um, he was driving first. The instructor was driving first. He, uh, my instructor is Paul, really cool dude. Um, great instructor so far. I love him. Um, but he took us out in the truck, and he got to a point, and we switched out. And so the third day, you'll be driving in the city with a truck and trailer. Um, and he'll be there. It, it, you know, <laughs> at first I was like, oh shit, I'm about to drive this big ass thing out where people are at and I have no fucking experience like shit uh, you know shit just got real um but it, it, it wasn't bad at all he literally he guides you the whole way he's sitting right next to you. he guides you the whole way he tells you where he wants you to go um he tells you you know what you need to do to um line yourself up for the, the say you're trying to take a a right hand turn it's a pretty tight right hand turn at this next intersection he'll line you up he'll tell you how he wants you to get the truck like if you're going to take a right turn you need to set yourself up on the left hand side while you're approaching that turn and when you're going through the turn he'll tell you how to steer it how to handle it how to watch the trailer make sure you're not going to hit a curb or you know hit anything so he does a really good job um of course you might not have paul you might have another structure but regardless that they're from all from all I've known with all the instructors I met, they all seem like really chill, really good, humble guys. None of them seem like assholes, you know. Um, so at first, you know, I was like, oh shit, this is, this is about to get real. But after driving, it wasn't bad at all and I wanted to continue, but we got lunch. And then after lunch, we started on the straight back. And you would think straight backing would be the easiest thing ever but when you don't have any experience back in any type of trailers i've backed up a couple of you know um little b box truck trailers like eight foot box truck trailers and stuff nothing nothing big a couple times you know um but i don't do it on the regular and you know i don't really have a lot of experience so you don't have a lot of experience knowing how that trailer is going to move with just the slightest steering of the truck <laughs> let's just say day one straight back i was the worst out of there's five people in our group and i they they kicked my ass i was feeling like shit because i'm the type of person that always catch on to things really quickly like uh, like in school i wasn't one that like did a lot of you know constantly writing it down and everything i have to see the instructor do it and then once I see them do it a couple times, and then once I do it a couple times, shit clicks to me really quick. I'm, I'm a really quick learner like that. And I wasn't getting that straight back on, on day one, and it was kicking my ass. And I felt terrible. I was like, I can't even straight back this thing. If I can't straight back this thing, how the fuck am I supposed to dock it, you know, back it into a dock or something? So I got pretty down on myself. Um, but day three, or excuse me, that was day three. Day four, so Thursday, we started the straight back, and I, I don't know what it was, but the shit clicked to me instantly, and I went from the worst to the best. Like I was, I was doing perfect straight backing the whole fucking time, and I was actually kind of getting bored. Like, you know, well, not bored, but I was like, the instructors weren't even instructing me anymore. They were just off chit chatting while I was straight backing because they knew they didn't have to worry about me. So it, whatever it is you do, listen to the instructor, listen to what he says because he does give you really important information on it. But also, while you're doing that, focus on something that might, might help you. Because I took what he said, and then I, I found something else that helped me maneuver the trailer a lot better. And then once that clicks with you, it's, it's easy. It's, it's There's nothing hard to it. So, yeah. So, day four was awesome because we, my group, so it's five people total, but me and another person are with flatbed. We're with Paul. We're doing the flatbed. And then the other three of the group, they're with the other instructor, Howie. They're doing the dry van, reefers, and everything. So it's really only me and another guy that Paul is instructing, which is great because it gives us 
the like the most one on one time because normally your group's three, but we only have two in ours. Um, so we were straight backing so much that Howie's group was still straight backing, and we, um, our group got to start offset backing um, by the fourth day, which was. Paul said we're like a day and a half ahead at that point. So we were getting we, we both of us caught the straight back and quick. Then we started offset back in, and we also city drive every day. Like either we'll city drive in the morning, or in the afternoon. And we'll, so it's back in for part of the day, city driving for part of the day. Um, so we already got to start the offset back in, and then after that again we had lunch. Then after lunch we drove in the city again. And Friday is pretty much the same thing. We we sh we worked on offset back in the entire morning, um, and that's. I mean, if you get straight back offset back, he'll he'll tell you exactly how he wants you to line up, like to put yourself in that in the, the cones. He'll tell you all the keys you need to line yourself up perfectly every time. So by the second or third offset, he didn't even really. He was, he was off talking. He was watching us, but talking because he didn't really have to instruct us at that point because we were we were getting it. Um, so he said, um, we we city drove after lunch. He's he was contemplating on already starting the ninety, but he's like, we'll just do that Monday. So we city drove um, after lunch again, and like I said, after the first day of city driving. It, it wasn't a problem. He took us on a harder route on Friday with, with sharper and tighter turns um, and worse intersections and everything to show us the different types of angles and all that. Um, but city driving isn't isn't the problem. Um, I guess you'd say backing's harder, but that's it. now when you are city driving, you do have to pay attention to a lot of shit. You have to pay attention to everything that's going on in front of you. Read your signs. Like, I know when you're driving your normal car, like you don't really pay attention to all the signs. Driving this 18 wheeler, you have to pay attention to all these signs. Like you have to know what's going on. You have to pay attention far ahead of you. See if cars, you know, see what the traffic's doing. You need to pay attention to your mirror. See if there's cars, you know, trying to do illegal shit around you, trying to do stupid shit around you, cutting you off, you know, all this stuff. Like you have to stay back because these vehicles weigh so much. You can't just stop them on a dime. So. You have to pay attention while you're city driving, but it was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. So that was pretty much what the week was like. Monday and Tuesday, class. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, backing and driving. And now a big thing about each day is they're going to show you like the first day. They're gonna, or they'll show you Tuesday or Wednesday. They, uh, they showed us. It's called pre-trip. You have to do your pre-trip every day. Um, I'm sure you've watched a lot of videos by now. You, you've heard a lot of truckers talk about pre-trip, pre-trip. It's, it's huge. They, they grain that in us every day. Um, you know, they go over the pre-trip. Our instructor, Paul, he let us record a video of him doing the full thing so we can actually, like, use it to study, too. They sent us an email with, like, uh, pointing out all the components that are on the pre-trip so you know what everything is, you know where it's at, you know, so you don't fumble when you when it comes to test day. Um, when they first give you that paperwork, because I think they give you the paperwork on day one when you get there, they'll have like a little folder and the pre-trip inspection list will be in there and they'll go over everything, all their expectations for you. Um, when you first see the pre-trip checklist or the little um, paper that has everything on there, you're like, holy shit, this is a lot of fucking shit to remember. Like, how am I supposed to know all this? But then when you see them do it and then you start to do it a couple of times, it's just, it's just like muscle memory, you know, um, you just, you keep working on it. It's easy. It's, it's not as bad as it seems when you first see that, that paper, that paper looks intimidating cause it's thick. There's a lot of paper, there's, or there are a lot of pages, there's a lot of shit on each one. Um, but it's very repetitive, very repetitive. Like everything <laughs> you're going to say properly mounted, not damaged, not leaking a lot. Okay. Um, a lot. Uh, pretty much on everything you 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 go well it's going to be either properly mounted not damaged or properly mounted not damaged not leaking if it holds air or liquids um but you have the outside of your truck pre-trip inspection and then you have what's called the end cab which is inside the truck um you have to do one in there too and then after that you have what they call the um the air leak test so you have to make sure you know your 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 
the air pressure and all that's not leaking and because <clears throat> the last thing you'd want is driving 60 miles down the highway and you go to press the brakes or not even go to press the brakes you, you you're driving down the highway and then that fucking low uh air pressure warning kicks on that you hear that alarm sound come on you see that on the dash you're like what the fuck and then you see that it's steadily decreasing as it's going down because once once the air pressure drops to a certain minimum uh, for I think rail trucks is between 20 and 40 psi those those emergency brakes are going to kick in and if you're going 60 miles and they kick in Jesus take the wheel because you're probably going to die and probably going to kill somebody so um that's part of the whole pre-trip you got the, the around the truck inside of the truck what's called end cab and then the leaks test so you're you're going to be doing that they'll go over it with you they'll show you how to do it but then after that if they when you get there early because they do want you to get there early like you know on time is late early is on time so when you get there early they want you working on the pre-trip just go find your instructor he'll give you the keys to the truck they keep them unlocked but to do leaks test and all that you got to turn the truck on They'll give you the keys, work on your pre-trip. Uh, after lunch, I said it's a 30 minute lunch, 12, 12, 30. The instructors don't normally get back until 1, 1, 30 because they have a meeting during that time. So from 12, 30 to whenever they get back, pre-trip, work on, start, work on your pre-trip. If you wanna stay after class, when it's over, work on your pre-trip. Saturday, uh, your half day, when you get done Saturday, work on your pre-trip. So pre-trip, 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 pre-trip. Like I can't stress it enough. Like once you do it so many times, I I don't have it completely memorized. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but after doing it for a week straight, you do start to build that muscle memory. Like I wouldn't be able to get like a perfect score on one right now. I still need to study and and and, and work on it. But I have a good muscle memory built up in my brain right now to go down. You know, start from beginning to end and. Proper amount of not damage, not leaking. Proper amount of not damage, you know, just, it, it's very important. So, so work on your pre-trip. And then uh, a little bit ago, you just heard me say Saturday half-day classes. Um, so, so Monday, like I said, the shuttle will take you to the class. So you have to be down the hotel at 6.30, by 6.30 to get the shuttle. Mm, two, the rest of the time you're there, you have to you have to either drive yourself or ride with one one of the guys in your group that drives or get a taxi there an uber there or something but you have to get there yourself and you have to be there instead of at seven you have to be there at 6 30. Um, now saturday you have to be there at seven and saturday only lasts from 7 to 11 30 and it's a different instructor it's not one of your regular instructors and it's just class time um it, like this the the Saturday for this week we went over trip planning and and ha um, like the importance of trip planning and and all of that and it was actually pretty interesting to give you this huge huge ass like I got a pretty fat big head this Atlas Ram McNally huge fucking Atlas but they show you how to use it and they show you the importance of Atlas when it comes to your trip planning and everything like that now yeah I know most of us will probably buy the expensive Garmin's or Rand McNally GPS's and put them in the truck and um, our truck or path or hammer truck, whatever, you know, whatever GPS you want to use. Um, but it is, it is still, now I've already knew how to work, uh, use an Atlas, which I feel like is a rare feat nowadays, but um, it is still important to know how to use an Atlas. Um, so you know they they show you the importance of it they show you like when you're when you're planning a route the gps not going to always work 100 percent of the time it can take you down wrong roads uh, or not truck routes it can mess up it can take you on a route that say is say you look in here and there's a i don't know if you can see it but a low clearance in wisconsin that the gps doesn't know about or, or doesn't think it's on there We'll say that you take this road on Wisconsin 32 southbound near Milwaukee and it's 13 foot two inches. Your truck's 13 foot six inches. You know, you didn't know that, GPS fucked you. Well, if you would have pre-trip and looked in the Atlas and noticed, oh shit, this route's taking me through 
I don't remember what I said. Uh, Wisconsin 32 southbound. I can't, I can't remember. But, oh, shit, my, my GPS is taking me that way. I can't make that bridge. I need to figure out a, a way around it. So it's good to pre-trip. It's good to pay attention to things before you start driving so you already know your route. You already know um, this is where uh, they, they say trucker path comes in handy. It, they say don't buy. Don't pay for trucker point. There's no point. Um, but if you want to, go for it. I'm not telling you what to do. But um, they say what's good about Trucker Path is, you know, shows you all the rest stops and Walmarts and truck stops and all that. And it will usually tell you, like, if they're, they have any openings, like, like any parking spots opening and stuff like that. So they say that part of Trucker Path is really good. Um, but, yeah, man, trip planning, very, very important. Slow driving, safety, very, very important. Paid attention even though you're in the right, you got to expect these cars to be stupid and do stupid shit. And you, you need to, because you, you're a professional truck driver at this point, you need to be a professional, yield to them, let them go, even though they're doing stupid shit, saves an accident. It's all about safety, you know. So that's kind of what this first week has been like. Um, I might have missed some minor things here and there. Those are the major things. You know, I can't, as I'm, I'm doing this all in one take. I'm not editing all this. I'm not talking here and then talking there and editing it all together. I'm, I'm here, sitting at the hotel doing this all in one take. So if I don't think of something small on the spot and I think about it later, like I said, I'll put it in the comments or something like that. But that was mainly um, what week one was like. And um, I had fun. Uh, driving it is is awesome. Um, fucking had a blast. I, I did get a little butt hurt um, when when we were first straight back and on day one. I did get a little butt hurt in my head. I'm very uh, my hardest critic's myself, and I'm sure that's true with a lot of you guys. Usually, your toughest critic is yourself. So I'm very hard on myself, and if I don't get something as fast as I think I should, I get I beat myself up a little bit. So I was a little bit down on Wednesday, and I think he saw that, and he talked to me. He's like, dude, you're fine. It's your first time doing it. And then the next day, I fucking knocked it out of the park. So, you know, don't get down on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. You know, this is a lot of people that do this. This is their first time doing it. Um, some people learn quicker than others. Some people catch on to this shit, you know, and others may take a couple days. So I had fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to week two. Tomorrow we're uh, getting into uh, 90 degree turns, like alley docks and stuff like that, getting into the harder backing. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's probably gonna kick my ass at first, but hopefully hopefully I get it and I can, I can get real good at it by the end of the week. Um, I don't exactly know what else we're doing. I know we'll be driving every day and I know we'll be backing every day. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the only thing that's on the test, because they take you to Chattanooga, Tennessee. He tells us that for our CDL. So you won't be testing in Georgia. You'll be testing in Tennessee. And in Tennessee's CDL, it's the straight back, offset, and 90 degree is all that's on their test. You don't have to do parallel or anything like that. Now, that's only for the Connolly location. Uh, they take you to Tennessee. I don't know about the Wisconsin uh, location, Gary, Indiana, the Arizona location. I don't know about them. This is just for the Connolly Georgia location okay so I don't want to give you you know I don't want to say that oh they only test for straight offset 90 and then you go to you know Wisconsin and they're like oh no you got parallel or oh no you got to do this I don't know what they do this is just here at the uh, Connolly Georgia terminal okay but uh other than that uh might give you a little tour of the the hotel just to show you like accommodations they give you. So let's let's turn this around. And so there's the door. I'm gonna turn it like this. So it's pretty pretty nice. It's a bathroom. Nothing too special about it. Got a little mirror. Got your little desk. I got my little gaming laptop set up there. Oh, uh, because after I get done uploading this, I'm gonna get on Discord and play some some game with the boys 
I wish I had my gaming desktop, but oh well. So you got the desk set up. Got a little couch that it pulls out to a sleeper. So he also got a, another bed. Uh, bed, bed. Very actually pretty. For hotel beds, these beds are, are pretty comfortable. I'm not going to lie. Not bad. Little refrigerator, microwave, TV that I haven't even turned on. I've just been on the laptop the whole time. Another little couch thing and a little closet. I got to unpack my stuff again because I go home on the weekend. So I just got back in. So, but yeah, guys, that was, that was week one in the books. Two more weeks and hopefully pass with CDL. So I'll talk to y'all next, next Sunday. I'll show you how week two went. Probably going to be a lot of the same week one. So if it's a shorter video and I don't really go over a lot in detail, it's probably because it was very similar to week one, but I'll try to say any similarities or or I'll try to think of the differences and everything so but till then deuces